a lot of people have a lot of different takes or predictions or opinions on what the rotations should be so we're going to talk about it we got a couple of graphics here i think king i think you and i have a little bit of a slight differentiation in our rotations too which is cool because nobody has any idea because we have so many different guys that can go in different places so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here so here is what i think the starters could be for next season something like this i thought about it i made a few changes to it this is what i settled on after thinking about it so i got Cade at the point Jaden ivy at the two Let's start at the three, Tobias at the four, Jalen Duran at the five. Everybody in the chat, let us know what you guys think. Um, this is not per se what I think I would want it to be, but I think this is more so what I think is just going to be. Because like I mentioned before, I, I like the idea of having a two big lineup, right? Whoever that is that can fit that bill, I would just like it to be a two big lineup next to Duran in that starting lineup. So that's kind of what I settled on. I think the Pistons may do. Let's go to the chat first. I see it, the chat just started going crazy out of nowhere when I put that in there. So either a lot of agreement or a lot of disagreement. Okay, Beasley. Okay, okay, okay. Seeing a lot of Fontecchio. Yeah. Fontecchio, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of that too. Solid one. Okay, okay. Fontecchio starts. Okay. This is what I exactly what I thought was going to happen. And I love it. So now, King, I want to give you the opportunity to kind of get to your starting lineup. These are what you had in mind. A little bit different than mine. Here's the reason why. Okay, first, let's just talk about this, right? Isaiah Stewart. He's the, the wild card when it comes to what I think is going to happen with the Pistons starting lineup. If Isaiah Stewart is still on the Pistons team, then I would have to switch my starting lineup. I would have to throw uh, Tobias at the three and put Stu at the four. That's mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. uh, Simply because when you look at the, the amount from the kind I, I know a lot of people love Fontecchio, but you look at contracts, Stu's going to start. <laughs> you know, Stu's going to start over Fontecchio. Uh, that's just the way it, it happens in the NBA. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy making a bigger, the larger contract is not going to be sitting on the bench. I'm sorry. This lineup that I had, obviously, you bring in Tim Hardaway Jr., you bring in Beasley, probably the best shooter on your team right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to throw one of them in, even though I would prefer. I would prefer to see Ivy on the floor okay. um, and more with Cade. Gotcha. I just don't think until we get another backup point guard. Yeah. I, just, I don't think we just roll with Sasser at. at, at I know what you mean. I feel yeah. you on that. Yeah. 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 So, Cause we we talked we we've talked about that at length as far as how we feel like Sasser gets pigeonholed at the point guard spot because of his size. If he was six four, six five, there's no way we'd be saying he's a point guard. So I'm with you on that. Here's kind of what I think though, something of a remedy for that as far as still with playing Ivy and K together. So JB Bickerstaff, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in his time with the Cavs, yeah. he wasn't known for going deep into his bench. He would often go no more than eight or nine deep, sometimes even seven or eight. So I could see a world where Cade and Jaden are getting almost all of the point guard minutes. Yeah, I don't see I don't see a world where both Beasley and Tim Hardaway Jr. are both getting consistent minutes every night. I think it's one of the two of them will get the remaining shooting guard minutes based on situation, which I don't think is a bad thing because you know it's good to have have that depth. You know, guys get in foul trouble, guys get hurt. So I think having one of those guys, you know, will be more situational and not consistently in the rotation night to night to night. And Malik Beasley, bro, he loves playing with downhill guys. Right? When he was with the Lakers, he had LeBron getting downhill, you know, finding him from open looks. You know, the exact same thing with Giannis in Milwaukee. So I think Jaden, who's able to do that same thing from the point of attack, slide him to the point guard spot when Kate goes to the bench. And then bring in Malik Beasley to play the two. And then allow Jaden Ivan to do his thing with the ball, get downhill, and Malik Beasley's right at home. You know, in the corner or wherever you want to find him. And then that way you allow yourself and Jaden Ivey to get 30 minutes a game. He can still get that time because he's not splitting between the point guard and the shooting guard spot. And we all talked about how he was still learning the point guard spot in the fly when he came into the league. Let him grow into it. Right? Getting the backup point guard minutes when Kate sits down. That's right. why I think it would be the best situation to still have them play together because maybe long term that is the answer. Like how it took JB and Jason Tatum some time to figure it out. He'll let them get reps in, maybe not the whole game but mm -hmm. allow them to kind of grow into those roles and still have guys at the ready when you need them. Right. Yeah. 
I mean, at the end of the day, obviously, the bigger staff's going to make his decision. We're trying to make sense of it, man, because it's literally the way the roster is constructed, man. It, constructed is just, man, it's not easy to pinpoint who's going to start and who's going to. It's not. I yeah. love it. I love yeah. it, too. Good problem to have, right? So Absolutely. And then, like I said, again, we don't know what the roster is going to be, you know, so. Yep. Obviously, you know, camp is going to be very important. Ooh, that's going to be a fun time, bro. <laughs> so this is what my reserves look like. I have Jaden with the second group for the reason I just talked about, right? As far as him sliding to point guard off the bench. So I have him there and have Beasley there. Then I have Ron Holland at the three, Fonteki at the four, and Stewart at the back of five, which could now be Paul Reed, depending on how that plays out, which we'll get to later as far as with Paul Reed. But this this is my backup five, and we're not. This is not like saying we're gonna play these five every night backup because it's not gonna happen. It's just just looking at the depth chart. This is who I have for my reserves, and then King. I think you had your own set of reserves, right? We go pull yours up. So here are King's reserves. You got Jay Ivey with Tim Hardaway Jr., Ron Holland, Fontecchio, and Big Stu. Before Paul Reed today, I knew we were right. probably gonna go and get another big. I still feel like we might end up still gonna get another better point guard. But right. For right. the current roster, this is what I selected because it's just to me it makes it makes sense. You know, you got Ivy who's obviously proven he can handle the basketball and play that point guard spot. Mm -hmm. You got him attacking a basket and the guy in Tim Hardaway, Junior Fontecchio, those guys you can kick it out to, right? Asar and, and Ron Holland is like looking at the same player almost to me. Mm -hmm. so that's why, of course I got both of those two at that spot. And then you got Stu. So again, Stu becomes the biggest question. Are you keeping Stu on the roster or not? That's the biggest question because obviously you got Paul Reed now. Right. So something has to give. Yeah. yeah. It's gonna be interesting. Like you said, there's, there's so many options. I don't think I've ever been this perplexed about what the rotations are gonna look like. It's a good problem to have. And I'm really you know interested to see how JB Bickerstaff is able to figure out how to put all these moving parts together over the course of a season so and then finally this is what i came up with as far as with our depth so we got sasser here we have window more here we have bobby clintman here and this big i had created this before we got paul reed so that kind of answers that question as far as who that other big is going to be third center backup center that's to be decided but i think we all agree on that those are going to be as of right now our depth pieces going forward in case we need it if somebody gets injured or something like that yeah, and you know, and this is why I can see the potential of someone possibly still getting moved because I don't think Trajan Langdon is going to have this team like we've been used to seeing over these last couple of years where we're completely overstacked that spot. Mm -hmm. not, he's going to balance this thing out. Um, so, yeah, definitely be on alert looking up as I'm continuing to look at Twitter and uh, see what happens, man, because, you know, some relief has to come somewhere. I'm glad you mentioned that too because I, I can't recall which beat writer it was that said at the time so i apologize to who it was but after the official press was over somebody asked tom a question about our roster and what he said was in the past we've had way too much money sitting on the bench we need to be paying guys who are playing so to your point that's going to be the vision that's going to be the direction we kind of want we're a little bit too evenly balanced now as far as the roster it's kind of like when you play fantasy football if you got a bunch of guys in the bench who are never playing you just got empty points in the bench you need guys in the game so that's kind of where the pistons are at so to your point i think that's going to be something that they look to do is to kind of balance it out even more so that they have more guys who are they're paying on the floor absolutely man okay i wanted to get to this dudes i think so look i actually didn't i didn't leave him out but i was saying earlier is i don't i don't think you're going to see malik beasley and tim hardaway jr both getting shooting guard minutes every night i think it's going to be one or the other i think it's going to be cade ivy and then one of hardaway jr or beasley i don't think they're going to both play every single night because i think ivy's going to get those backup minutes or he should get those backup minutes so he can get 30 minutes a game so that's why it could be tim hardaway jr or it could be Malik beasley but i think every other night somebody might be getting a dmp or maybe four or five minutes a game and that's it so that's why you didn't see tim hardaway on mine I mean, y'all really want bi don't y'all man <laughs> still on it I'm not mad at it. I'm just, I don't know, man. I feel like we have a chance to be extremely athletic. I feel like that would kind of just bring us back down to earth a little bit as far as being able to get the ball up and down the floor. But we have Ivy, we have Asar, and we have Ron Highland. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if those guys develop any type of jumpers, 
imagine being able to play those three together. I don't know, man. It would be cool. I wouldn't be mad at it, but it would just I would just kind of be a little bit concerned about how it could stunt the young guys going forward if we sign him long term. But we'll see. We got to wait and see. We had this straight to the top in the know. I got to face it. I got no time to wait.